And then I see the little monitor go from do 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 And I was like, holy this is going down. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about all of the mistakes I made in medical training. Well, not all the mistakes per se, because there are probably way too many to even count. But I thought I would at least share some of the ones that stood out in my mind, especially when I was in med school. And yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get into it. Make a fool out of myself. What else is new? Let's go. All right, so before I get started, I just wanna apologize. I am getting absolutely destroyed by the pollen in New York City right now. It's like caked inside my apartment, even though I live like 400 feet up. It's still all over my apartment, so I had to shut all the windows, and now I sound like I have a cold, but it's just allergies. Now, the mistakes I talked about today are not serious mistakes, and they had no effect on patient care. It's just a way to kind of make fun of myself, because I'm sure people have experienced similar things when they're in my shoes as well. The first mistake I made in my medical training was back in the emergency department during my rotation. There's actually two mistakes mixed into one here. So let's let's get started. My third year, I was in my fourth year. My fourth year of med school, you have to do elective rotations and my school required you to do an emergency medicine elective, which as you know, I don't really like emergency medicine, but you know, I'm down to learn, let's do it. So I got a rotation in New York City working in a very busy Brooklyn hospital. Now. The one thing I did not know about that rotation, which was mistake number one, was that it was an audition rotation for people who were interested in emergency medicine to go into emergency medicine. And they were basically there on the rotation trying to impress all of the residents and attendings in the hopes that they would get a spot there for residency. Now, I didn't figure that out until day one when they told me I had to do X amount of overnight shifts, I had to do X amount of shifts, I had to report to attendings, I had to do presentations, I had to take a test at the end of the rotation. It was like this whole thing I wasn't prepared for, but you know, I did it, I had to do what I had to do. So that was mistake number one, because I shouldn't have been there in the first place. It was like way too serious of a rotation for someone not going into that field. But I will say I learned a lot on that rotation, like how to start IVs, how to draw blood. The nurses were phenomenal, became best friends. I sutured people, you know, it was, it was pretty good rotation. One of the mistakes I made, which is pretty funny. So you're assigned a resident and the resident was basically taking care of like, who knows how many patients, like 10 patients. He assigned me to one patient. We had so many issues getting IVs on this patient and he came over there. I couldn't get it, the nurses couldn't get it. So we put the tourniquet around the wrist and there is a huge vein on the wrist that's poking out like huge. He literally was like, okay, Michael, you got this. We call this the intern vein. No one can mess this up. You'll get the IV in, all good. And then he left and I was like, I'm not an intern yet which is a first year resident. But I mean, I'll give it a shot. So took the IV, smashed right into that intern vein, the easiest vein to get access in. And what I did was I went through and through the vein and essentially blew out the vein and I was no longer able to get an IV in there. When he came back, you know, basically I had my tail between my legs at that point and he was like, how did you screw this up? Like, what are you doing over here that you can't get an IV into that vein? And you know, obviously I felt like garbage and like this big, but you know, everybody makes mistakes, but little does he know, I access arteries and veins for a living now. So jokes on him or maybe, I don't know. I'm thirsty. All right, so before I get into the next comical mistake that I made during my medical training, let's go ahead and talk about an actual mistake that I made in the beginning of my medical training that I hope you guys don't make. So one actual mistake I made during medical school for sure and the beginning of residency was that I found myself trying to get involved in as many different things as possible. I wanted to do research. I wanted to publish. I wanted to go to conferences. I wanted to do this. I wanted to do procedures. I wanted to do like all of this and learn so much and do so much and be involved in so much that, you know, hopefully it would get me into residency or land a good fellowship. But at the end of the day, I realized something and that was that I found myself actually not taking care of my own health when I was trying to venture out and do all of these things. And at the end of the day, what's the point in doing all these things if you sacrifice your own health to begin with? So that was just my kind of anecdotal experience. It is okay to get involved in as many things as possible, but you have to make time for yourself. You have to do things in your personal life. You have to take care of your dental appointments 
appointments, you have to take care of your checkups, you have to work out, you have to eat healthy. And when you overcommit to all this medical stuff like research, etc., you end up sacrificing your own health and taking care of yourself in the process. That's one of the mistakes I started to make and realized what I was doing and shortly thereafter switched it up to make sure I focus on myself first and all the other stuff second. Okay. Now let's get into the next mistake I made during my medical training, which this was a fantastic one. I, I also kind of alluded to this one, I think in one of my prior videos. Oh, it was my medical specialties video when I kind of clickbaited you all. I'll link that up here. So I actually started my OBGYN rotation two weeks surgery slash labor and delivery floor. And then I went two weeks into the GYN clinics. So that means I got to go to the OR, which means this was my very first time scrubbing in to an actual surgery in my entire life. Now I look back, I see med students who scrub in with me during cases and it takes them like 14 hours to like get their gloves on and like make sure they're doing everything sterile. Now it's like second nature, and I'm sure a lot of like scrub techs and whoever works in the OR knows that it's easy to be sterile once you do it for a while. But when you're first starting out, it is the hardest thing to do. When someone tells you you can't do something, all you wanna do is do that thing. So when you're trying to be as sterile as possible, you have the head nurse in the OR who's staring at your every move, making sure you're not gonna do anything stupid, touch anything you're not supposed to touch. You have the scrub tech who is watching you like a hawk, making sure you're not going to ruin the sterile field. And here you are, so stressed out to begin with, trying to scrub in, get your gloves on, you know, you have to do the thing, you're not used to doing it, have someone else put on your gloves, you're turning the wrong way when you have to hand them your gown. It's like a stress nightmare for when you're first starting out. It sounds so simple, but I promise you, everybody who's been in the OR and scrubbed in has experienced this. My very first time scrubbing in, everything was going well. Got those gloves on, got the second glove on, boom, rotated, counterclockwise, nailed it. Do you go counterclockwise? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you go counterclockwise. I had to think about it. Nailed it, all good, and then something happened. My eye protection, where you wear those, you know, flimsy little plastic goggles and I had my mask under it and all of a sudden my mask just kind of like pops over my ear or something and it hits my goggle directly into my eyeball like it actually hits my eyeball so what's the first thing you do to react to that I literally keep in mind I'm completely sterile downed up I ground my my glasses with my glove and like adjusted them because it like poked me in the eyeball and then I was like all right back to normal but the good thing about being in the OR as a newbie is that Something like that does not go unnoticed, I promise you. So the nurse comes over, she was so nice, she could have been so much meaner, and I've seen them be very mean to people. Whispered in my ear, did not make a scene in front of everybody, and she said, I think you touched your goggle with your glove. Let's get you a new gown and gloves. And I was like, oh my God, you're right. I totally just grabbed my goggles, I wasn't even thinking about it, and made a, the classic mistake that every med student makes when they're first scrubbing in, I was no different. My surgeon was busy like setting up, it was a C-section actually. She was busy setting up the field, getting everything ready. She didn't even know I did all this. And then I just quickly took off my gown and gloves, re-scrubbed in and had a new gown and gloves, fresh. And I was very conscientious about not touching anything after that. And we just went in, did the surgery, all good. I had that little mishap and I know everybody has had that mishap who has ever scrubbed in. So I wanted to tell you all about it so that you feel better about it when it happens to you or if it's already happened to you. I mean, of course, there's like 18 fire trucks and ambulance is, ambulance is, ambulance I, outside. So good, we'll wait. Okay, the last and final mistake I made, obviously we're just joking around here and I'll make fun of myself some more because this was about as bad as it gets. And this happened in my third year of medical school. So picture this. A bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, third-year medical student, me, my fresh white coat. I was on my second rotation ever in internal medicine, taking care of hospitalized patients. So I was on the hospitalist service. I was taking care of like three patients at the time. I was in a patient's room, and even I could tell, even as a naive physician or student doctor, that this patient wasn't doing well at all. Like, they looked terrible. Now, at that time, I didn't know what was wrong with them, but I did know they looked terrible. And as I'm sitting there communicating with the patient, the patient is becoming more short of breath. And then I see the little monitor go from do 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 And I was like, holy 
this is going down. So basically what's happening is the patient is coding. And we say that it's like kind of the medical phrase we use in the hospital for someone's heart that has stopped. And now we have to bring in the code card which has all the medications. We have to start giving epinephrine and other medications in the ACLS algorithm. And we have to start doing chest compressions. It's a huge ordeal, obviously, because the patient's essentially dead. Whole team rushes in, like 20 or so people, People are yelling, people are trying to get IV access, people are trying to get central line access. It's kind of like organized chaos, and for someone who's never seen a code, which was me at that time, it was a little crazy, and at the same time, I wanted to be a part of it and kind of witness it all, but I didn't want to get in the way. So essentially, I just kind of like stood in the corner and like watched, which was awkward because, you know, nobody knows who I am. I'm just standing there, lonely in a corner, watching hoping that someone will bring this person back to life. Nonetheless, it started getting a little chaotic. People started pushing me in the corner, so I decided, you know, at that time, I was just gonna go ahead and stand out in the hallway. Get the heck out of the way, let the professionals do their work. That was a good decision in my mind, but it, I didn't really execute it well, because as soon as I started to move, I kind of stepped behind the code car where they had all the defibrillator plugged in and all the stuff plugged in, and I was like walking past it, and I tripped on the wires of the machine that shocks the patient. So essentially I like fell over and actually tumbled on the ground in the middle of a code. Like literally I was like, I was like, oh, I'll just see myself out. And I just tripped over behind the cart and I was on the ground for a second and people were like, what the hell is this person doing? Who is this person? And I was so embarrassed that I just kind of like, you ever seen that Homer Simpson clip where he just kind of like fades into the bushes? That's, that's what I wanted to do at that time. That's just like such a typical med student making a huge fool out of yourself. I, I mean, I was so embarrassed. That was one of the first days I was on service too. So like, you know, every day I walked in, they're like, oh. I, I knew in the back of their mind, they're like, oh, that's the guy who uh, tripped in the code the other day. A real winner. He's going places. So, you know, what can you do? That was many years ago and obviously I'm better now, I think. That officially concludes this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you have any mistakes like this, let me know in the comments below. These are just a few of the ones that I can actually think of, and I'm sure there are tons more. But nonetheless, here you go. And as always, make sure you follow me on TikTok and Instagram, and I'll see you all on the next video. See?